parcel arrived this morning and we move on to part two of the video, now filmed in widescreen. Note my excitement at noticing it's from Peter Spears, so let's, uh, I've opened the envelope but I've not taken anything out yet. Let's see what six pounds gets us. Out of shot, it's a piece of paper, but wrapped up inside the piece of paper is that. A new brass drive gear with 11 teeth. Let's see if it fits the motor. There's the motor bogey of my HST, and uh, that's the little gear that we've got to try and get onto there, so I'll just get the old uh, packaging open, hopefully. Now it's very small, so I'm a little bit worried about uh, misplacing it. Sorry for the uh, loss of focus there. Okay, there's a little brass ring, and, oh! If it goes, that's a fairly solid fit. Now I did see somewhere that I might have to heat the ring to get it over the axle. Yeah, at the moment that's not going, so if that goes on, I think we're on to a winner. Right, I'll back to you in a minute. I just thought that before I get the soldering iron out, I'd have a go at uh, using a G-clamp to try and push it on, because you know how much success I've had with soldering irons. So uh, I don't know how successful this will be. Um, we'll just give it a quick little squeeze, hoping that the blocks are gonna help avoid bending the uh, axle, but um, who knows? The blocks might just go into the axle, to be fair. Let's have a look. Oh no, the wood's just making a hole. So uh, let's um, just use the plastic part of the clamp then. Okay, let's see how this looks. So I'm clamping straight onto the axle now. That's either pushed on slightly or not at all. No, not at all. All right, we're gonna to need to use the soldering iron and heat it up and hope it expands over it. Back in the mo, we're gonna heat this on this, the soldering iron, and I've got pliers at the ready so that, safety first, I don't burn my hands. And I'm hoping if I hold this, oh, it's very much close to the camera, if I have that on there for long enough, it will warm up and expand as metal does, and then it will fit over the axle. This part will be like watching paint dry, so I'll come back to you. You can see that I've been joined by a little persuasion, Mr. Tappy, just in case, having heated this gear up for several minutes on the soldering iron, it's not ready to go. So, uh, here we go. Oof. Oh no. Well, that, that went badly wrong. I had to drop it inside the motor there. Uh, right, so that's still not quite right. <sighs> this would be why I wanted a model shop to do it, and not me. Okay, back to the drawing board. Partial success. I decided to use a pair of mole grips, and sure enough, the cog is on the axle. But I'm pretty sure, that goes back into zoom, that's too far out still. So I need to do the mole grip trick again with, I don't know, a small nut or something. Not ideal, because I wanted a smaller nut that wouldn't just bite on the teeth. Um, but I'm going to give this a go. Um, see what this looks like. Might be too far for the mole grips. Don't know. So I probably need to uh, make the mole grips a bit bigger, actually. Of course, the danger with this is that I bend the axle on the motor, which would uh, be a disaster. Oh, now there she went. Still spinning freely. All right, well, let's put the gears back on. 
moment of the truth. Did the motor get melted when the hot cog went inside? Is it still going to turn? Oh, yes! Well, I count that as a partial success. I've turned it back around the other way and given you a close-up on the motor in the hopes that we can see as we now try to run it backwards. Is it going to go? Oh, it's turning. Yeah, I'd say. That is a success. No messing around with different carriages this time. We're just going to go for the whole lot or nothing. So, um, well, let's see. The lights are on. Oh, there she goes. Okay, well, that's a full lap. We'll uh, leave it going. Its uh, current record is eight minutes. Hopefully, this one will last a bit longer. Well, there we have it then. One working Intercity 125 high speed train. I think probably I should try and make some other improvements. I wonder what's next. Many people would question why spend time and energy updating an old model. It's well over 20 years and obviously there's newer and better ones out there. But there's a reason that my Intercity 125 box is on the back wall, along with some other favourites. Yes, it's my childhood train. Yes, it's an icon. But I can't just let it go and get rid of it and replace it. The first time I had the uh, Intercity running again, after its first trip to the model shop, lasted about eight minutes, I was really disappointed because it only had lights working in one direction, at the front. My childhood brain remembers there being, quite clearly, red lights at the back. So I thought, oh no, something's broken. But as soon as I opened it up, I realised that it's just my, well misremembering from childhood. Let's open it up and have a look. This is the dummy power car of the older style Hornby HST and I thought I'd just show you how to take off the body shell if you didn't know already. Um, if you just have to service the bogies, the bogies will come out by sticking a screwdriver in and just pulling them out, but we need to get actually under the body shell. Now I always find it easiest just to prise the side off a little bit first, and there's two tabs on either side, and then once you've got a little bit, a little bit going, then you need to prise the back off. And once the back is leaving out a bit, then start working your way carefully down the side of the body shell. And it gets to about this point where you go, oh, it's going to come off really easily. But these front tabs still have to be taken off. Usually once you get to three, it'll come out all right. This one though, as I say, not had this one apart as much as the end motor car. There we go. With the body shell removed, it's easy to see why this train could never have both white lights and red lights at the back, because there is only one bulb. As soon as I opened it up, I realised that it was my brain imagining things, but it is possible to improve it. I ordered off of eBay from uh, Black Cat Technologies. I'll try and give them a bit of a plug. There's a QR code you can scan. Black Cat Technologies. They have produced little PCB boards that are very tiny but that are made to replace the bulb essentially. One for each power car there. And they weren't very expensive. I think it was £13 for the both, including shipping. Um, so we're going to give this a go. Um, there are plenty of other places I've seen on YouTube showing you how to do this. I'll link them in the description. They'll show lots of other improvements you can make, but I'm going to get the lights done first. This is a side-on view of the, I say, dummy power car. The power car is more or less the same, except there's a motor at the back. Um, that little black thing there, that's going to become important later on. Sorry, I'm out of focus there. That's important later on to getting it to work. Um, but we're interested in this end to start off with. Um, this driving area 
just comes off, didn't really, really need the screwdriver there. Uh, it might pull out the little wires, which is okay, but we've got to remember which way round the wires were, because we've got to put them back in later. So I'll just pull those out. All right. So the curly whirly one is the one that goes over here. All right, now this bulb that's left, that's what was originally, sorry about the focus, that was what's originally powering the lighting system. So we're gonna pull the bulb out. Underneath there's just some little, well the wire tabs around, that's all it is. Um, essentially I don't need that bulb, but I don't know, maybe I'll use it for something later on. Um, and then it's just a case of popping this in the right place and wedging it in with these little wires. Now it's absolutely fine just to wedge it in, it says in the instructions. Um, you can also solder it in or use some tin foil just to provide a better contact. Um, what we've got to avoid doing, if I try and get it in focus again, is avoid blocking those LEDs. They're the red ones, I believe, on the outside. And I've got the cool, sorry, the warm white, sort of yellowish version on these. Um, so we'll just, uh, well, I'll finish that up on the video and try and get them in the way. I've had a play around. I think I've got things wedged in, no soldering yet required. I did find that I had to swap over which wire was connected to which wire. It seemed to be round the wrong way. Maybe I've done something wrong, don't know. But anyways, if I run the train to the locomotive in the background, warm yellow lights. As I run the loco away, it'll now turn red. Oh, but it doesn't because of, if you might remember, I said this little black thing was gonna become important toward the end. Well, this is called a diode. It stops electricity going one way through. We now need electricity to go both ways through to light up the red lights. That's my next job. The instructions say to bypass this either by soldering a new connection or by wrapping some wire around it. Um, I'm going to try an alternative method as I've got a connector block that I've cut in half, one for each train, and I'm just going to try cutting out the diode and then connecting it with a connector block. I guess if you're working with a more fine scale unit, um, you might be worried about having enough space to do that, but I think, oh, hello, there's so much space in the body shell of this HST, why wouldn't you? Even in the motor car, the bogey doesn't take up very much room. So um, that's the effect we're gonna go for. So you can see it on camera. So we're gonna tighten up the screws and then we'll put it on the track and see what it does. Back on the layout then, and uh, we'll get the loco to push it towards us first. There you go, no problems there. And now to go away, hopefully we'll see the red lights. Hooray! Obviously no coupling between old HST power cars. Um, I'll put the body shell back on and uh, we'll see what it looks like. I just thought before I put the body shell back on, I'd try and address another common complaint, and that's the lights. I've just popped these out of there and this yellow part should be black and the inside of here also looks much better if you can paint it black. Um, today I'm not going to venture forth with any paint, um, sorry, get the focus back in, I'm just going to have a go with a permanent marker. No idea if this is going to work but you've got to try somewhere haven't you and uh, this might work, it might not. So black permanent marker. If it doesn't work, I'll just paint over it again later. Mm, I'd say at the moment it looks more dark blue colour. Definitely a black permanent marker though. Just get the top. Now, as you'll have noticed from my soldering skills at the first part of the video, I'm particularly dreadful with fine motor skill kind of jobs so getting the paint out fills me with dread but even I can handle a bit of colouring in I'll finish this off and get back to you there's the end result uh, of the body shell after the uh, permanent marker a bit of unintentional weathering just around the outside that I'm not that pleased with don't know if I can do anything about that at this stage um, I did also just to uh, add a little bit of interest colouring 
the windscreen wiper. I'll put it back together, we'll put the lights on and we'll see what the overall effect is and we'll compare them. It works absolutely perfectly but as soon as I try to put the body shell back on something knocks out of place. It says in the instructions you might want to put a bit of tin foil in to give it a bit more extra wedge. It is supposed to be just push fit but it says if all else fails solder it. Now we know my soldering is not great but I can't say I've got much else of a choice. I'm going to have to man up and give it a bit of solder. So um, we'll see the results in a few minutes. My incompetence when it comes to soldering knows no bounds. As soon as you try to put the body shell on, something moves, so it needs to be attached. The instructions say, try some tin foil, but I thought it needs to be firmer than that. I'll try soldering it. I am incompetent. What I've actually done is used a bit of modelling glue to stick everything down. We can see that the lights all still work, so I'm going to try and put on the body shell again. This is the two uh, power cars compared then. Obviously the one that I've done the one that I haven't done. Um, believe it or not, the front lights are on on that, so if nothing else, the brightness of the lights has changed radically. I'm a little bit annoyed about a slight mist black paint, but otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. If I change direction, they look really good. I'm really pleased with that. Um, just need to get the other one done, and then we're laughing. There we have it then. One Intercity 125, upgraded with... Lights! I have to say, it was not that difficult to do. I'm pretty pleased with the minor changes I've made, like the colouring in the windscreen wiper and the grill, just using permanent marker. Um, similar sort of mistake made with the weathering at this end, but not quite so bad. Um, well, that's it really. Until we meet again, travel safely.